cleaning a tin toy that you just got. Now I don't always take my tin toys right apart, right away. Sometimes you're not such a good idea, right? So basically what I'm talking about here is how do you clean your tin toy? The first thing I do is I get just the standard washing up liquid in the sink and I wash the whole toy first to have a look at how it is, let it dry and then reevaluate. So let's go do that. So here I am at the kitchen sink with a bit of warm water, don't go too hot. And then a bit of soap, washing up liquid. Doesn't really matter what brand. And a toothbrush. And I just give it a quick wash. Now this is a really good way of evaluating the toy. What it is you really want to do with it before you take it apart. Now this one has a bit of rust here. But you know what? It only cost me a couple of euros. So I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with it yet. Nice little train station, I think. Let's give it a good scrub. And we'll see what we got. And we'll take it to the next stage, right? Okay. Wash it off. Look, there's a lot of dirt coming off. Ooh. See it in the water. No. Yeah. See, and there's stage one of your cleaning. So we're just going to let this dry and then we'll go on to the next phase. So if you put a bit of white spirits on there, which is kind of hard, it doesn't take paint off or anything, especially when it's this little grass stuff, and you wipe this, you do get some rust off and some stuff, but, you know, it's okay. I mean, it's already got the, gr the grit off, see? So if there was any oil or anything, it would come off. See, there's a little bit of stuff coming off, but not much. So that would be another phase. I'm testing out some other methods, but we'll keep working on them. So, okay, so you know, if you use thinners, it only gets like um, oil or grease or something like that off. So, you know, you can use it or you don't have to, you can go straight to the um, compounds. See, there's a little bit of rust coming off there, but you know, not much happening. I don't know how much of this you want to take off when you look at it like this, look. You want to leave the patina there, so let's get to the next phase. Yeah, so if you get label marks, you know, self-adhesive label marks, they always do this, they stick them on there. And that's got an acetone which will damage it. So what you do is, you, this isn't a mustard bottle just so it doesn't spray too much. Take a little bit of white spirits and just wipe it and voila, it's gone, right? It takes the glue off. Then you can use your compound, right? Use your compound afterwards, you want to clean it a bit more. Just a quick tip there for you. So, in the olden days they used to take toothpaste. It's kind of like you're cleaning your teeth. And you don't want to remove all the enamel on your teeth, it's the same with this. So it's kind of the same concept of being very careful how much you remove. So let's put a bit of this here, the toothpaste, right? This is the old school thing that they used to do for cleaning. I'm using white paper just to show you what it looks like. Yes, yeah, so I've taken a bit of um, toothpaste, put it in here, and I have to go get a jar of water, of course. Now, you can use a toothbrush and see what it does. Let's take just a spot here, put it on. And then do a little bit of wiping so you can see just a little bit of blue coming out. That's all you want. Okay, so let's do the blue roof like this. 
<laughs> Can you see that? Uh, put a bit of water in. Toothpaste just takes enough off. Do these two rooms. There we go. Now I usually use um, this carb compound. It's a light carb compound. I really like using that. You can see the rust coming off the tabs too a bit. So it kind of gives it a rusty look, but it's not all rust. There we go. See that? So there's just a little bit of dirt, grime and dirt, and you know, there's very little blue coming off or green, as you can see. So let's get a new spot here. And let's try the other one, this one. Now this might be a little harsher, see. Never tried it against the toothpaste before. And we won't do the green one because we did that with the toothbrush. And we'll see the difference at least. See the blues coming off a little bit more. Right? I mean, yeah, it definitely is. So there we go, I gotta face it towards me for a minute. See, I like the car compound, kinda gets it done quick. I'm gonna use that on this here in the front shield. Car compound, I usually use a rag, but I want to try to show the dirt coming off of it. Turn it towards you. I don't have too many legs left, to be honest. Wags. You don't want to take the stencil off too much, you know. It's beginning to shape up. I don't think it's going to get very clean, to be honest. Use the toothpaste for the front of it again. Might as well use that up what I put down there. It is cleaning up a bit, I think. I may have to take the roofs off to get up in there, but we'll see. I don't know how much better that looks. It's wet at the moment though. So, so that's how I clean them. Then I and I usually use the car compound. Mine is, um, what is this called? Uh, you can get all sorts, but turtle wax polishing compound, light to medium cleaner. That's what I use. So there you go. I'm going to use a bit more on it. Sometimes you can see some stuff come off, but this is fairly rusted. Anyways. There we go. That's how I clean my, my um, toys up. There's a bit of white here. Anyways. Voila. So if you want to be a bit more gutsy, you take 600 or 1200 and it's a wet and dry sandpaper. And you just let go along things. You have to be really careful with this because once you do too much, See the paint's coming off there now. Once you start seeing that cream going through, you stop sanding. Very lightly though, you know. This is only recommended for really bad damaged toys because if it was anyway kind of a good quality, You'd kind of be ruining it, so. As you can see, the roof is definitely getting better from this. Better looking, right? I'm dipping it in water as I go. And, you know, there might be some little white marks show through or something, but at least 
you know, and you leave a little bit of rust to make sure it looks old still. Right, let's clean this and see what we got. There we go. Now, isn't that a way better? That's how I clean toys. I don't use the sandpaper too often, to be honest, but this one is an extreme rusted one. Well, it's fairly rusted. It still has a graphic, which is really nice. I gotta make a base plate for it later on. I'll make a base plate here, spray it. And we'll have a little station on our hands. There you go. We'll put it in the middle. Oh, you can take a look. So here it is again. Now I've um, wiped it down with WD-40. I took off the roof. I had to file these tabs a little bit because they were too rusty. And up underneath there, I cleaned up the rust a little. I sprayed it with WD-40, wiped it down. And I think that's the way I would leave that. And now I will make later on a base for this, right? And we'll put a base on like that with a bit of tin. And it'll join my train toy system. So there you go. That's how I clean my toys. Now, I usually don't use 2P. I usually use the compound. And I don't uh, very rarely use wet and dry because it's too harsh. But I wanted to show you there's options. So there you go. Happy tin repairing.